Welcome back to the Organic Chemistry Basics. In this video, I will be introducing the different functional groups and I will be naming them in my next video. We first have to ask, what is a functional group? A functional group is made out of atoms that are not carbon or hydrogen and this gives the organic molecule very specific chemistry and interactions between other molecules. Another important topic to consider is the R group. The R group is not actually a functional group, but rather it is a way to represent the rest of the molecule. If I want to look at the functional group X that shows up on a short carbon chain or a long carbon chain, it doesn't matter, I will simply show it as Rx, where X represents my functional group and R refers to the rest of the molecule. Throughout my videos, I will be referring to functional groups by showing them as Rx, this way we can focus directly on the functional group and not worry about the molecule that it's attached to. If I have more than one R group in a chain, I differentiate them by putting an apostrophe on the R. So the first R group will simply be R, the second R group will be R prime, the third will be R double prime, and so on. In a carbon chain, you will have different types of carbon atoms. And first I will highlight where all the carbons are to remind you that every intersection every angle and every end of the molecule represent a carbon atom. A primary carbon atom is defined as a carbon that is attached to just one other carbon. In this molecule, see that carbon 1 is attached only to carbon 2, 7 and 8 are each attached only to carbon 3, and 6 and 9 are attached only to carbon 5. A secondary carbon atom is a carbon that is attached to just two other carbons. In this example, carbon 2 is attached to 1 and 3, and carbon 4 is attached to 3 and 5. A tertiary carbon is one that is attached to three other carbons. In this example, carbon 5 is attached to carbons 4, 6, and 9. And finally, a quaternary carbon is attached to four other carbons. In this example, that's carbon 3, which is attached to carbons 2, 4, 7, and 8. We also have different types of carbon chains. A chain that has only sigma or single bonds is classified as an alkane and this will have sp3 hybridization. An alkene has at least one pi bond or carbon to carbon double bond and this will be sp2 hybridized and trigonal planar about the double bond. An alkyne is classified as having at least one triple bond in the molecule and this triple bond will be linear and 180 degrees because it is sp hybridized. You may also come across cyclic molecules which are simply carbon chains attached in a circle like this cycloalkane or this cycloalkene. The simplest functional group is the alkyl halide is Rx. X represents the halogens which include fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. We characterize the alkyl halide based on the order of the carbon that the halogen is attached to. If I put a fluorine on a terminal or primary carbon, this will be a primary alkyl halide. If I put a chlorine on a secondary carbon, I now have a secondary alkyl halide. And if I put a bromine on a tertiary carbon, this is a tertiary alkyl halide. Let's do some quick practice. In each of the molecules given, Identify the primary, secondary, and tertiary alkyl halides. Number one, we see that the carbon is attached to two other carbons. This is secondary. For number two, we have one fluorine on a primary carbon and the other fluorine on a tertiary carbon. For number three, we have iodine on a secondary carbon and bromine tertiary. Problem four, we have chlorine on a secondary carbon. Problem 5, iodine is also secondary. And problem 6, chlorine is on a primary carbon. An alcohol is classified by the hydroxyl or OH group attached somewhere on the carbon chain. An alcohol is defined by the type of carbon that it is attached to. If I put an OH group on the end of my chain, the oxygen is attached to a primary carbon, which makes this a primary alcohol. If I put my OH on a secondary carbon, the alcohol is defined as a secondary alcohol. And finally, if I put my hydroxyl group on a tertiary carbon, 
I will have a tertiary alcohol. Since the alcohol is attached to the carbon chain by only single bonds, this will be sp3 hybridized, which is tetrahedral in shape, with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. An ether is classified as having an oxygen between two R groups. The R groups in an ether can be the same, like this dimethyl ether example, or they can be different, as in this methyl propyl ether example. As with alcohol, ether only has single bonds, which means an ether is sp3 hybridized, tetrahedral in shape, with a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. Amines are characterized by having a nitrogen bound to the carbon chain, but unlike carbon classification, an amine is identified by how many carbons are attached directly to the nitrogen. A primary amine is classified by a nitrogen with one R group attached to it. A secondary amine is classified as having a nitrogen with two R groups attached to it and just one hydrogen. A tertiary amine is classified as a nitrogen with three R groups attached to it, and the rare quaternary amine is classified as a nitrogen with four R groups and a positive charge. This charge comes from the formal charge for nitrogen, which should be five minus four, giving you positive one. Our next set of functional groups are all related by the carbonyl group, which is a carbon double bound to an oxygen. Notice that the carbon and oxygen share a pi bond, so they are sp2 hybridized, trigonal planar, and have a bond angle of 120 degrees. A ketone is defined as a carbonyl group between two R groups. These can be the same or different R groups as in the ether molecule. An aldehyde is characterized by a carbonyl group at the end of the molecule, so we have an R attached to the carbonyl on one side and a hydrogen on the other side. And finally, the carboxylic acid is characterized as a terminal functional group that has a carbonyl with an OH attached to it. Now don't confuse this OH with a hydroxyl group. Whenever you see a carbonyl directly attached to the OH, this is a dead giveaway for carboxylic acid. Here we have two additional functional groups that have a carbonyl in them. An ester is characterized by a carbonyl group attached to an oxygen, which is located between two different R groups. And finally, the amide is characterized by a carbonyl group directly attached to a nitrogen group, for example, NH2. Let's look at a number of less common functional groups that will pop up throughout your organic chemistry studies. A thiol is a sulfur alcohol. Recall that sulfur is directly beneath oxygen on the periodic table. Because they share chemical characteristics, they can bond in the same fashion. So where an alcohol is ROH, you replace the oxygen with the sulfur to get a thiol. An enol is a combination of an alkene and an alcohol. That's where you get enol. In the example below, recognize that we have a double bond for the alkene and the hydroxyl for the alcohol giving me my enol. A benzene is characterized as a six-membered carbon ring with alternating double bonds that is often represented by drawing a circle in the center of the ring. A nitrile is characterized by having a C triple bound N on an R group, where CN is the cyano portion of the molecule, similar to cyanide. A peroxide group is characterized by having an oxygen directly bound to another oxygen in a molecule. This can occur as hydrogen peroxide, a common disinfectant, or an alkyl peroxide, which has two R groups on either side of the oxygen. Recall from general chemistry that the oxygen or oxide ion had a charge of negative two, but the peroxide, which was O2, two minus, was characterized by two oxygens directly bound to each other. The last group we'll look at today is the imine, which is characterized by having a carbon double bound to a nitrogen. This can occur at the end of the molecule, ending with an H, or in the middle of a molecule with another R group attached to the carbon. Over the next few videos, I will be discussing how to name organic molecules. This will include how to name all the functional groups from today. Since oxygen shows up in many functional groups, let's see if we can identify what each 
class of molecule this oxygen belongs. For problem one, we have a carbonyl group in the middle of a molecule, so this has to be a ketone. For problem two, we have an oxygen directly bound to two R groups, so this has to be an ether. In problem three, we recognize a carbonyl, but we also recognize an OH group. Whenever you see those two connected, that has to be a carboxylic acid. In problem four, a hydroxyl group, which is on an R group, so this has to be an alcohol. Problem five, we have a carbonyl with a hydrogen, that's a terminal carbonyl with nothing on it. This has to be an aldehyde. And finally, in problem six, we have a carbonyl group attached to a nitrogen group, which means this has to be an amide. Recall that nitrogen order depends on how many R groups are attached to the nitrogen directly. So let's see what we have here. In problem one, there is only one R group attached to nitrogen, making it a primary amine. In problem two, we have two R groups attached, making it a secondary amine. Problem three, we have three R groups attached, making this a tertiary amine. And problem four, we have two R groups attached, making it a secondary amine. For this example, let's try to identify all functional groups in aspirin. I have a carbonyl group directly attached to a hydroxyl group, so this has to be a carboxylic acid. On the right, I have a carbonyl group attached to an oxygen attached to another big molecule, so this has to be an ester. The last group on this molecule looks like a benzene ring, but if benzene is attached to a bigger molecule, it's called an aromatic group. For our final problem, Let's identify all functional groups in aline. Starting from the left, I see an R group attached to an oxygen, attached to another R group. This has to be an ether. I have two benzene-like looking rings, so these have to be aromatic. On the right, I have a carbonyl near an oxygen, which looks like a carboxylic acid, except instead of a hydrogen, we have a negative charge with a positive counter ion. This is the salt version of the carboxylic acid called a carboxylate. For additional practice, you might want to look online and find different medicines or other molecules you're familiar with and try to identify all the functional groups that show up. I hope you found this video very useful. If you learned anything from this video, please show your appreciation by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below. You can also email me your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find me online at www.leah, spelled L-E-A-H, the number four, S-C-I.com. You can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Leia Forsyth Tutorials, or search for Leia Forsyth on Facebook and Twitter.